Welcome back to Creative Foods TV, man. My favorite place to be is in the kitchen. Thank you guys for joining me again in another episode. Today, we are doing some Escovish fish and some banana coconut flitters on the side as well. Come on over, come look at the amazing ingredients that we have over here. All right, so we have our wonderful ingredients right here sit to the side ready to be combined and make a wonderful Escovish fish and also our uh, banana coconut fritters as well. Traditionally, our uh, Escovish fish served with our uh, festival, but today we're gonna change it up. We're gonna do something different as well, because you know me, I don't like to stick to traditional stuff. I like to change it up, flip it around, flip it upside down, in whatever way you gotta flip it. But we have all the ingredients right here. As the process go along, you're gonna see how we do it. And it's gonna be amazing and delicious like always. So, let's go. All right, for a fish, of course, we wanna wash it down, get all that extra, you know, gooiness and ooiness that don't belong on there off it. So we're gonna use our lime and wash it down and make sure we get that extra stuff off it, definitely. I wanna use one whole line for this, these two fishes. You know, we don't wanna waste no extra line. All that juice, we wanna squeeze and get it all up in there. There we go. So we wanna get all this lime water everywhere in the crevice and corner, wash it out. Make sure you get a nice clean wash out of it. You know, all this extra things right here, get them out. You know, you want your fish to be clean and edible, every parts of it, even the head, if you choose to do so. You know, it's all in your own decision. Whatever you choose to do, it's your own choice. If you think it's delicious, it's delicious. In Jamaica, we think the head is delicious. The eyes are actually good for you as well. So, I'm gonna wash them all the way down. Wash off the extra lime juice off it as well. All right, you wanna give these a final, nice final wash. Drain out the water, you know. We wanna pat dry them down as well. I'm gonna bring it over here. Use some napkins. Pat dry them down a little bit. Make sure all the excess water come outside of it. Then after that, what we're gonna do, we're gonna take off the excess, the excess fin off them. You can leave it on if you want to, but I choose to take it off. You know, as I said, I wanna be, everything on here to be edible for me personally. So I'm gonna take off the excess fin right here. And after we take off the fin, well, next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna score it. Not like goal or basketball core or anything like that, but we're gonna score it along the side. You'll see how we do it. As I said, not like basketball or football or anything like that. So we're gonna give a nice little score on the side right here. We wanna put all the, in, uh, the seasoning and everything inside of here. We're gonna do two score on the side and we're gonna do it on both sides as well. You know, kind of like a uniform score, nice score. I hope you have a nice sharp knife like me. Nice score right there. One score, two score, three score, four score. But if you like Tom Brady, you come back from any score. I'm just saying. So for the seasoning, we gonna use some uh, garlic salt. You gonna put up probably about a tablespoon of garlic salt in there. Uh, for me, uh, I don't measure. Again, like I said in my last video, I really don't measure seasoning. I just know the angels come to me and tell me when to stop, so I just stop. And then we are gonna put some onion powder in there as well. And then boom, they tell me to stop right there, and I stopped. <laughs> and we have some salt, some kosher salt, my favorite salt to use. We are gonna use. Uh, I'm gonna use three pinch of salt in there. For fish, you really don't want to use a lot of salt uh, in there because you know it's a very light and delicate thing and uh, it's even easy to over salt because there's not a lot of fat content on it and we're going to add our black pepper as well fresh ground black pepper all fresh ingredients i like to use every day all day all year every year all right for the season we're going to give it a nice little stir over here make sure everything is evenly coated all around then we're going to bring our fish over here and then we go get it all in the crevice and crack right here all in the crevice and corner we want to make sure it's evenly coated all around and everywhere get a nice little flavor and a bite of spices whenever you take a bite into it it's a very delicious uh, fish nice fish you could get at any local supermarket or if you can you could probably get it frozen too but I recommend you get it fresh if you can before you get it frozen definitely Same thing to the second fish, you know, 
nice inside the crevice and corner right in the score. Everywhere up inside there. For an extra season, you can just drop it right all over it. Right over it and rub it all over it. All right, we have our fish nice and seasoned right here. We're gonna let it sit for a little bit. Uh, next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna get our ingredients for the escovish uh, chopped up and ready to go. Put it in a nice little bowl for whenever, whenever the fish is finished frying, then we'll go ahead and add this to the mixture as well. So we can soak up all that flavor and season from the fish. And then we're gonna add some uh, vinegar on top of it as well. As I said, as the process is going on, you're gonna see how we do. So let's just go and get our fire lit for our fish to be fried up. All right, this is our habanero pepper right here. We're gonna get it nice chopped up and sliced down. We wanna get everything in there. We wanna get that nice little spice bite to it. Chop it right here. Our green onion. Take out all the seeds. We wanna get a nice little slice in there. Green bell pepper right here. flavor combine all freshness it's gonna be so wonderful and beautiful you don't have to use the whole thing but you could use the whole thing if you like I'm just using half and here all is heating up over there making some noise tell me it's almost ready I love how food speak to you sometimes but you got to understand the language of food or else you will never be in communication with somebody, you know? Just like talking to a person with Spanish uh, language. If you don't, if you don't understand their language, you'll never be able to speak to them, you know? Just gonna be like, yeah, mm-hmm, uh-huh. But you'll never be able to speak to them. So it's me talking to food, food talk to me, we understand each other. Slice on them. Next, we're gonna get our onion as well. We're gonna peel off the extra trash. We wanna get in a circular motion all the way around. One trash is another man's treasure, but I don't think nobody's gonna treasure this trash right here. They normally eat this on the beach. Use a whole onion in there. You need that onion flavor to it. Yeah, all the way down. We gonna get one more off it, man. Cause there we go. Then we gonna get our carrot nice and julienne. We gonna cut it down the middle. Hey, did a little cat on the fiddle. Hope you have a sharp knife in the kitchen because you need a sharp knife. Cut off the end pieces. Let's drill it down the side. your finger if you're not a pro with it you know you don't want to accident in the kitchen next thing you know you're gonna have to order from McDonald's all right we have all our ingredients right here chopped up for whenever the fish is ready and now the heat on the fire is hot enough, so we're gonna drop these fish in.
that sizzle. All right, you want to get it nice and crispy on each side. Whenever it's finished on that side, about four to five minutes, flip it over on that side again, and then we're going to take it off whenever it's ready. So just let it sit for right now, and then we're going to go to making our plantain flitters, coconut plantain flitters butter. For our flitters, we're going to go ahead, going to drop about three pinches of salt in here again, or just make it four. Two tablespoons of baking powder. We have bananas right here. We're gonna use three bananas. You wanna make sure your bananas is kind of overripe a little bit. And then we're gonna drop them in a ninja. The professional ninja. Kind of break them up a little bit. The banana here gonna have a nice little sweet, flowery flavor to it when you add it onto this. It's a Caribbean thing, I guess. You know, we don't want to waste no food, man. All food is delicious and all food is nutritious, especially when it comes to fruit. So we're going to break them down, put them in this, you know, and I'll puree them into a nice consistency. Matter of fact, let's use two. <laughs> we don't want to overdo it, man. We're going to get our coconut milk open over here. We normally use water, but instead of water, we're going to use coconut milk and give it a nice little coconut flavor to it as well. Nice, thick, rich, graced coconut milk. As I said, instead of using water, use coconut here, you know, add an extra flavor to it. That should be good. I'd say about half a can of this coconut milk. Lock it up real tight. All the juices are sealed inside. And then... Nice, beautiful thickness right here. We're gonna go ahead and uh, just mix it around. Yeah. And get all these flavors combined together. Everything is called marinade together. It's like a union of marriage. You know, the real marriage, the one that's not broken up by any kind of divorce. Put it all in there. It's okay if some fall out. No. What we're gonna do is we're gonna rinse this out a little bit, put a little bit of water in there. You know, get all the extra goodness out. You want it to be a little gooey, but not too gooey at all. So even though we add water, it's still the flavor and mixture from the banana and coconut that's in it as well and not just pure water only. And then, bam, there you go. There you have it, just like that. Let it rest for a little bit, then we come right back to it. So we got our fish right here, we're gonna check on it. Uh, if you're if you're moving your fish and it's still sticking, that means it's not ready to be moved yet. So we're gonna go ahead, see it's moving right now, we're gonna go ahead and flip it over. Nice, beautiful brown color on it. So we're gonna flip this one again. These fish are gonna be so amazing. So we're gonna let it fry on this side again, and after that, we're gonna be ready. All right, we wanna check on our fish right here, make sure it's all fresh down, you know, getting all the appropriate oil into it. Nice and beautiful, man. Very nice and beautiful. These are about nice and ready to go right here. We're gonna put them in a little plate with a little napkin, take off a little extra excess oil all of them. Beautiful snapper fishes. We're gonna turn the oven, the stove to medium high, and then we're gonna add our ingredients in it as well. All this beautiful flavor and color and ingredients in here. We're gonna go ahead and just wrap it down in there. And get it nice and translucent.
Got some tomato cedars here. We want to pour and put them in there. Uh, the allspice. Get the, put them in there whole. Get all that flavor from it. Just sit up inside the oil right there. Got a few popping out the pot. <laughs> Got a live one. Here. And then we have our vinegar here as well. We're gonna put it in just a second. Let it just simmer down for a little bit and get that nice flavor soak up inside of these vegetables here. And after that, before we take it off, about maybe a minute or so, then we just drop the vinegar in here as well. So we got it nice and translucent here. We're gonna drop our vinegar in. Man, the flavor in this though, you have no idea. If you never tried Esco Beach fish before, you should definitely try it. The flavor in it is just so delicious. Whenever that vinegar does sit up inside of it, uh, combined with all the seasoning in it, it's just crazy. And the spice as well, don't forget that, from the, the habanero pepper. So, we're gonna listen for about a minute or so, then be ready to go. Alright, you wanna continue to mix these all over here. Everything is getting flavored. Everything is getting flavored. You know, flavor is ain't got nowhere to hide it, no corner. Everybody get get a little taste of something. Nice and beautiful. So it looks like we, it's right where we need it to be. We don't want it to go right over. So you know, everything is nice and chunky. We want it to be a little bit crunchy as well. Like having that nice crunch. We don't want it to be too, too soggy and too soft. So we're gonna go ahead and lock it off right there. We're gonna go ahead and put it to the side in this wonderful dish right here. I'm gonna go ahead and set it to the side right here. Let it cool off for a bit. You know, all that flavor still gonna be picking up inside here. And the rest to the side. Beauty, beauty, beautiful. All right, this is for our flitters right here. Some vegetable oil, get it nice and heated. All right, you wanna get a nice spoonful of our dough right here. Drop in the pot, kind of press it out a little bit. Let that oil boil all the way up in it. Press it all out, make sure everything is even. Keep an eye on it. These get brown real quick because of the sugar uh, from the banana in it and the coconut as well. So they can get brown real fast and they might burn. So you want to keep it brown. You know, see how fast it's brown right here. Nice, beautiful brown color right here. As I said, from the sugar from the banana. That natural sugar is releasing it, so it's gonna get brown real, real fast instead of you just cooking a normal dough by itself. So you want to turn the the, ho the stove to about medium to low high, and um, just let it cook from the outside to the inside as well. You don't want it to be too dull inside. You know, so you want all those ingredients to be cooked up inside here as well. And you can see, you got a nice little sizzle going on right here. That's exactly what we need. All right, you just want to check on it right now. Uh, still a nice golden color not burned or anything, you know, uh, for this pot, we just keep one in there at a the time, but of course, if you got a bigger frying pan, you can just uh, continue to put more in there for, for the purpose of this video, we're just going to use one uh, for right now, because it's all we need at this moment right now, so, you know, flip it, still golden brown, no burnt color, still good, but you want to check right here in the middle, kind of press it down a little bit, if it's not too soft in the middle, it's still kind of squishy, you, you know it's cooked from inside. You know, if it's still pushed all the way down and you know, it's still doughy inside there. But right now, it's nice and good. Just wanna leave it there for about 30 more seconds so it can get that nice, soft, fluffy flavor from inside. All right, now it's ready. Gonna go ahead and kill the heat. Go ahead and take it off. Put it on a piece of paper towel for the excess oil to just drain off. Right here. Yeah, it's still cooking from inside. I know you heard that. There you go, now it's cooling down. All right, and now for my favorite part, man, the plating. You know, I always use my imagination, as I said, when it comes to plating, and uh, bring out the best in my creativity when it comes to this. 
So we want to get all this nice goodness and juiciness on top of this fish right here. And it's going to soak on top of it. So, bam, right there. Right there, you know. I'm going to get some of the juices on there as well. All that soak in there. And actually, you could turn this into a taco if you want as well. Just get your favorite taco shell, you know, peel off all the fish off it. So make sure you have no bones in it as well. And I'll uh, just put a little salad in there, and this will make for a great taco, I believe. You want to get all the juices all over it, right there. Rest this to the side. You want to go ahead and get your nice little flitters on there. And then, for our garnish right here, we can't do nothing without our garnishment, so we're just going to garnish the plate right here. And this is a very simple dish, very simple and delicious dish. So, you know, if you don't have a lot of time or you're not trying to be in the kitchen for a long time, definitely try this out. And this is the way the cookie crumble. All right, so there you have it, man. The beautiful and delicious Jamaican style Escovese fish with a coconut banana flitters. Traditionally served at festival, but as I said, we gotta change it up. We gotta put our extra flavor with extra touch on it and make it our own dish, so to speak. And we're gonna dig in it now and we're gonna let you know how it tastes. Like, already we know it's, it's beautiful and delicious, you know. So we wanna get everything on it. Come over, come over, come over, come over, come over here. All right, it's right here. Nice and delicious. I wanna make sure we get a bite of everything on it, you know. Definitely. Definitely, the nice crunchiness to it. The spice is just kicking you at the back of your mouth as well, but it's not so spicy, make you want to cry. And if we add it and pair it with this nice and beautiful banana fritters right here, which have the sweetness to it to cut away the spice as well, it's a beautiful combination. All right, it's absolutely delicious, absolutely amazing. I hope you guys get to try this at home. Thank you for watching the video today. Don't forget to like, subscribe to our video for more coming very soon. Um, share it with your friends and your family for those who want to try something new, you know, think outside the box, go outside the box, definitely. And thank you again for sharing. Thank you for coming to Creative Foods TV. You have a good night.